Hey, what's happening? It's Robbie, and uh, I wanted to answer six questions I have here. I've got a question I heard this weekend. I thought it was a really good question, and I've been over this several times. And actually, I'm going to get the Bible here to make sure I'm answering this in a very good way here. And, uh, it's going to be in 1 John. Get there a little bit later here. But... I'm going to answer according to what I know off the top of my head. That's usually how I do my stuff anyway. Um, so this weekend I was um, with, a, with a lot of people and one of the sisters had asked me that, you know, for the true believers who really are born of the Spirit, they're really separate and they, they try to confront people who maybe believe themselves to be saved but they, they aren't very aware of sin in their life. They're not very sin sensitive, okay? And so, you know, the true believer comes to the one that is looking like something doesn't make any sense. It's like, why are you living like this if you call yourself a Christian or whatever? And then they come back at you with this, uh, well, everybody sins type of thing, okay? And so this question was like, what do you do with that? How do you answer that? Because it seems like it puts you in your place, okay? Well, in the book of First John, um, let me give you the short answer first. The first, the short answer is like this. Some practice sin and some struggle with sin, okay, but eventually they get out, okay. Um, those who practice sin, practice lawlessness, they're not of God, okay. They love the world, the things that are in this world, they have no evidence of being changed, no regeneration, no born again, no, no sensitivity to the sin, okay, no sensitivity to the compromises. You know, the Holy Spirit really is involved with your life really does a deep work. He's going to be getting into the intricate little cracks of every little spot in your life. I mean, it starts with the obvious stuff and gets into um, the more difficult things as well. Okay? So, um, that's the short answer. It's just some, some people practice with it, some people struggle with it, and they're struggling out. Okay? Some people are getting stronger in holiness because they care to please the Lord. They really do want to grow and know the Lord. They seek to know God. Yeah, there's going to be issues, but you seek to know God and you get out. The book of 1 John, I think it's all in the same chapter, says that he that says he has no sin is a liar. Okay? So at one point in the same, in one chapter, in that chapter it's saying that there, you can't say you have no sin. And at the other, on the same chapter, on a totally opposite sounding note, it says this. It says that he who is born of God can't sin. You know, if you're really a Christian, if you have the faith or whatever, it says you can't sin, you know. So it's like, how, do that, how does that add up? It sounds like, a con sounds like a contradiction. You know, a lot of people will use that and tons of other things that sound like that from, from words. But if you're really Christian, you would know. Because if you're Christian, you have the Spirit of God. The Word of God was written by the Spirit of God. It was God-breathed. It's God. It was written by God, and it's interpreted by God. So you yourself would have to be discerning. Um, you'd have to be a person that's holy, and you, you look like what the Bible says is, is, is Christian. It says, text your, check yourself to see if you're in the faith. The book of 1 John is a place that you can look, just so happens that's the same book. You use that book to check and see, are you in the faith? Is that book describing me or not? The book of 1 John. So, it says that you're not supposed to love the world. So you look at the fruit, you test it, see it. You'll know them by their fruits, okay? Um, if their fruits is constantly talking the same way as the world, they don't really they don't really have any separateness, you know? A lot of these false converts, they, they have their own version of it. You know, like, I'm, I'm really, I help a lot of charities. We do nice things. We're good people. We work hard. We, have a, we care about our families and just stuff like that, you know. And that's like, yeah, that kind of stuff sounds pretty good. And sometimes that can be a, the reflection of a godly life. Some of that stuff looks like a form of godliness to me, though, you know. So in, in answering to this question, a real born-again person is going to continue to grow in holiness. They're going to continue to seek after God. They're going to be concerned about what God cares about, okay? So you can see the difference in people's lives. One of the thoughts I used was, one of the, one of the examples I used, I was, you know, and I was on my delivery route and at a restaurant. I heard some people before they opened up, they're talking at a table about one of the waiters there. They're like two girls talking about a guy saying, this guy, is, he was talking about doing steroids. And they were so concerned for him. And the only thing, they didn't say anything about, and they're going to, he's, he's going to grieve God. They didn't say that. They said, he's going to ruin his reputation, you know. So people have different reasons why they bridle themselves, and it looks like a good thing. See, Christians don't do that. I'm like, I'm like a good Christian. I, I don't think he should be doing drugs, or I don't think they should be gay. I don't think they should be into Allah. They don't should. Well, they have all these different reasons, but it doesn't mean that you yourself are right with the Lord, you know, just because you don't think the other people should be doing other things. Okay. So, 
it matters why you separate yourself. You know, Christians are separate for the right reasons. Unto God, unto the will of the Father, unto Jesus Christ. The people who love Him, they love to worship God. Not because they love to do the world stuff too, <laughs> you know. It's like a husband, like, I love my wife, but I love my mistress as well. You know, it doesn't make any sense. That in the natural we can understand, but I'm telling you supernaturally, it's no different. If you love the world and you try to call yourself a Christian, you are one that loves your wife and you love your mistress too. You're crazy. You're, it, you, if you had spiritual revelation, that would be obvious to you. And because it's not obvious, it's an indication that you don't really match what the book of First John describes as a true converted Christian, okay? Okay, that's my answer to the first question. What do you do with people when they say, well, everybody sins, so don't be judging me for my sin. Yeah, some people are sensitive to it and some people aren't. God will get to the works of everything. The true heart of the true converted person cares about the work of the Holy Spirit in every avenue of their life, that they may truly be shaped to the conformation, to, the, to, the, you know, to look like Jesus Christ. They want to be conformed into the image of Christ. The character of Christ must be being developed in our life. The Holy Spirit must be active and current in our life. We must seek to know God and ask the Holy Spirit to continue to show us places where we're not really laying our life down. Okay, amen? That's the answer to that one. Another brother, um, this is a brother versus the sister that talked about the other one. Hey, Robbie, I wanted to ask you a few questions. What do you believe about the end times and the rapture? Is it pre-post? Is it pre or post? Okay. Um, what about the end times? Um, end times is a highly controversial subject. And everybody has their biblical perspective of it and all that kind of stuff is secondary at best okay it doesn't matter in my opinion what what the end times has to be because in my opinion um, you could be walking with the Lord and forfeit at the last day and whether it was pre-trib or post-trib you'd still go to hell you're gonna still bust hell right open because you are not with Jesus you know you could walk away and have your righteousness forgotten you know so what do I care about the end times? I think they're very cool, and if they're used in the right time, they're used in the nowness of, the, of God, and they're used as something to be promoting a, a, a walk with the Lord. You know, education is important, but it's not, it's not the foundations of holiness. Okay, um, example. I think it's important to have a church with serious holy conviction, like you read about in the Book of Acts very awe-stricken conviction where people were dying because the Spirit of God was there, Ananias and Sapphira was there, and they died and everybody was like in fear because they knew this was serious, okay? Well, that kind of a feeling you get with some kind of preaching, holiness, real holiness preaching, will give you that awesome revelation that Jesus is still on the throne and still worthy to be trembled before, and His Word should cause you to say, oh my goodness, <sighs> you know? And there's... I'm just going to say it. There's a gentleman like this, John, John MacArthur, okay? I've listened to him preach. I'll, I'll say what I believe. And I remember listening to some very convicting preaching, and it left me going, whoa. And it left that very awesome touch of God, like the intro places of like, this is, this is what they must have been experiencing, this just incredibleness of the reality of Christ, you know, this God's presence is so strong, you're like, whoa, God, oh, God, I'm trembling before you, you know, and then you, uh, then I popped on this very informative um, word from John MacArthur talking about Islam versus Christianity or something like that, educating you, and it, the, the, the material was incredible, <laughs> it was so good, but I did not sense the conviction in there. Nor have I ever sensed the conviction when I listen to a lot of ministers, okay, him, as well as a lot of people, okay? So does he have a lot of good information? Yeah, I don't agree with all of his doctrines, but I do agree with most of it, but I don't agree that there's any conviction. <clears throat> you can take one little thing out of all your good preaching and make it a no conviction, and that means you're just learning. You're ever learning, but not able to come to the knowledge of the uh, truth, you know? And that's truly what God's people do. They recognize him as an awesome God to be tremble before, to be feared, to be reverenced in the most awesome way. Not to leave a sarcastic look on your face, but to be in awe, awe of God. Look off a cliff, think you're going to fall, and say, oh, 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 you know, we should have moments with God that are like that. And because we don't, it's evidence that we are um, seeing him for what he really is. Because that's kind of what I think Isaiah did saw, see when he did saw, see God on the throne. He was saying, everything's unclean. You know, this is 
untold reverence, untold reverence. Mountains are mighty, all these things, their oceans are roaring, just incredible waves, incredible storms, just things that are just incredible, just mighty, mighty big things. <laughs> it's all there because God set it in motion, you know? <laughs> so, um, I don't think it's a very valid thing to get too involved with all this end time stuff. Pre-trip or post, like I said, I don't care about any of that stuff. I think it's I think it's terrible that people get divisive over it. I believe it was made by the devil. Um, the different versions of the end time theology, it's called eschatology. I believe that it was made by the devil's people to just divide the people of God. So when we get into this kind of stuff, unless we're doing it with the right heart, um, we'd be very careful because it's highly controversial and it causes divisions. And uh, debate is not of the Lord, okay? Um, arguments, stuff like that is not of the Lord. Debate is in the list of the same things as like fornicators, idolaters, sorcerers, dogs, just, you know, and debate, you know. These things are not Christian. They're not of the Holy Spirit, okay? So these things are made to divide the church. So that's why I don't get into that stuff. Is it important? Yeah, it's in the scriptures. Of course it's important, but under the right light. You know, Christ must be, we must, it's all about a relationship with Jesus, first of all, okay? So what do I think about that stuff? Is it pre-trip or post? Um, we'll know when it happens. I take, um... David Wilkerson's perspective, he says, we're the, is it pre-trib or post-trib? He says, we're, it's the, we can't lose trib, you know? If you're really going to seek to know the Lord, it's, it's the we can't lose trib, okay? Paul Washer says, we'll know when it happens. Don't worry about it, okay? Most important thing is that you are regenerate and led by the Spirit. What do you think about doctrine of eternal security? Can we lose our salvation? Um, it's a big subject, you know, and, and it depends on how you per, set, set it up yourself on this one. I personally do believe you can be walking with the Lord, and I believe that um, a true Christian truly coming to the Lord is a very, very serious thing, you know. Picture the Red Sea being opened, picture the fire, you know, the fourth man in the fire, picture all the mighty acts of God, and then start talking about what, what it means to become a Christian, okay. It should be a mighty act of God and some kind of like thing where you know you are his people. You're born again of that spirit. You know, you've come as a child and something happened to you where you knew you were different forever. And um, to come away from that thing is a pretty big deal. To be truly converted and then to be truly unconverted, it just seems pretty like, why would you ever go if you really knew God? But at the same time, those who knew God know when they've broken fellowship with God. And sometimes I believe that can be a grieving where there's still something where the Lord is still trying to work with you. But I believe that at the same time, he says, I've also, um, in Romans 1, he says that I've, he's, he's released them. He says that they knew God, they knew him as God, but they um, glorified him not as God. You know, they took pleasure in their iniquities. It was describing what they were doing. It was gross immorality, okay? So can you, can, can you lose your salvation? Um, and the way that people are saying it, I don't like to say it plainly and bluntly. Um, a lot of the times, because it's a very serious topic, I don't like to answer it plainly. Um, but if I had to answer it plainly, I'd say, yes, of course we can lose our salvation. In fact, I believe Scripture screams it, okay? And the only reason people can't hear that is because they've been so brainwashed by the masses, okay? When you teach that you can't lose your salvation, you teach people not to fear God, okay? You teach people not to be in awe of God. Now, and on the other hand, is there something of eternal security? Absolutely. Yeah, Christ. Christ is salvation, okay? Christ is salvation. If we're walking with Him, pleasing to, to, p pleasing to walk, um, setting our hearts to please God for real, you know? Like, how satisfied would you be if you lost your wallet and you never actually found it? Would you ever be totally at peace? No, you'd be searching until you actually found it, you know? And if you know there's a place of honest rest before God where you knew he was satisfied with you you know that you would never if you ever know that you'd be just as unsatisfied without falling your wallet you'd be just as unsatisfied not finding that place of rest with God you know you found God <laughs> what am I talking about? I forgot, I'm losing my train of thought can you lose your salvation? yes you can of course you can lose your salvation but it's not a simple topic it's not a simple blunt careless topic okay John Bevere says, yes, of course you can walk away, but it is not just as simple as that, you know. John Wesley made a whole book about it, about how you can help, you could lose it in one day, you know. Like, is the question, like, what if you truly come to the Lord, and then you walked away, and you were struggling with sin, and you went and messed around and did something stupid behind closed doors, and Jesus come back right then, would you stay here, or would you be gone? 
I think you'd stay here. I think you'd go to hell. I literally do. I think if you um, got saved and got tempted on your way home and went to some strip club and you're sitting there just like, oh man, what do I do that for? And, you know, and, and then before you really had gotten forgiven again, um, I believe if you died in a car wreck right then, I believe that you'd gone to hell. I, I literally do. Before you got peace with God again, I believe that you would go to hell forever for turning off the path. I really believe that. Now, I believe that there's a struggle, and I believe that we're going to continue to climb on and hang on. You know, um, the church would have no problem struggling with sin if you told them the truth and said, if you have an argument with your wife and then you die in your sleep, when you wake up, you're going to be in hell. Okay? You're not a Christian to argue. You're in the flesh. You forfeited the walking with the Spirit. If you had the Spirit of God, you would very easily know. Okay? Because you don't, you can guess and make it up on your own. These kind of questions come because we are listening to words instead of listening to God. That's the problem. People are seeking to learn about God, but they're not seeking to know God. Okay? If you really seek to know God, you're going to have that same look on your face that the rich young ruler probably had when he said, Oh my goodness. I had no idea how severe this was. You know, this is serious, super serious, okay? I know I'm all over the place. This is how I talk, excuse me. Can we lose our salvation? Yes, we can. That's a quick answer. It's a very serious topic, and it should not be um, answered carelessly and, and anything like that. It's a very serious topic. I believe it's very dangerous, and I believe it's against all of what Christianity is to preach that you can't lose your salvation. But that's a very blunt statement, and that needs a lot of description to make sure that I'm not being misquoted, okay? Because it's a serious thing. I mean, I could never imagine myself wanting to give up on the faith, you know? I know what it feels like to stall. <laughs> I mean, I've done that a lot, you know? Stalling when you knew God was saying something and you knew you were like, oh man, oh man, oh man, you know? The Lord says, let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> Very fearful thing, okay? What do you think about Dave Hunt and the Berean Call Ministry? Um, I like Dave Hunt. I know he just died recently. Brian Call. I like Bereans a lot. I think it's good that they search the scriptures to find out if what they've been hearing is true. But like I said, the, the Word of God is, is, is useless to people. The Word of God is absolutely useless to those who do not repent. Um, if they don't let the Word of God shape them, they're, they're going to they're gonna end up becoming probably one of the worst people on the planet. You know, People who know the Word of God, but they, do not, they don't tremble at the God, Word of God. They don't let it take shape on their life. I believe that they're some of the worst and most dangerous people on the planet because they know stuff and they can make things sound right because they can explain it with scripture and uh, their own personality mixed with the word of God can be a very powerful tool to deceive a lot of people and that's that's why I believe a lot of people are falling into false religion is because of that so uh, the word of God is dangerous and um, but I like Dave Hunt I don't I don't know how much conviction there is with Dave Hunt in the Berean call ministry, because I know the Berean a lot of times is very connected to the Baptist, which they believe that you can lose your salvation. I mean, you can't lose your salvation, so I think that that's a kind of a like uh, sign. But I still consider some of these people to be my brothers. I can sense that um, not only, I mean, even though they don't believe that they can walk away, they just never would anyway. So in a lot of ways, there's a lot of I can sense a lot of brother brotherhood with them. You know, I really sense union with a lot of these people too. So. I like Dave Hunt. He's not King. I think he's not King James only. I think he had a debate with uh, Gail Ripplinger when it comes to the King James version. I definitely side with the King James, but at the same time, um, there's a lot of very godly men who um, are they, they use the New American Standard, you know, or the New King James or something like that. Which uh, I understand the issues, but I, at the same time, I've seen incredible fruit come from people who don't use the King James Bible. So, um, do I ever struggle in holiness? Did I ever struggle in holiness in my early years in the faith? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I struggled with, tremendously with immorality. Um, I absolutely did. Um, I promised never to touch a woman again. I, and I, I didn't keep that one up. I promised never to um, get involved with immorality. I didn't keep that up. I promised never to go to dance clubs. I didn't keep that up. I promised never to go to rock and roll shows. And I, I think I kept that one up. I really do. Maybe, maybe like a little bit, maybe one or two times or something, in the whole eight and three, eight years and three months since uh, my massive conversion and my massive resolve to go all in with God. You know, um, since then I've probably been to a punk show a couple times or, at, or maybe once or whatever, 
and I've been to a few couple movies and I've probably watched about 20 to 30 movies in that last eight years maybe in most of them I only watched half of it because they're just so boring to me now I just don't even see the point very I listened to very little secular music in the last eight and a half years um, on purpose I mean of course you hear it all the time but that doesn't that's not the same so struggle in holiness yeah sexual sin was probably the greatest um, temptation to get total victory over it took me five years to get total victory over internet issues and um, the other issue and and um, being too close to females you know past the line you know and I've had I've had I would call it total victory over immorality so um, I know you can get victory and I already made a video called romantic idolatry at the first 10 minutes of it is teaching you how to get victory how I got victory myself why it took so long um, next question yeah it took me a long time to get victory because I, there's a lot of things I didn't know so I want you to watch the romantic idolatry video it's called romantic idolatry is of Satan okay that's what the video is called find that video first 10 minutes of it will answer the question further um, thanks brother okay and then the other question says I was listening to a sermon with Kerrigan Skelly he denies original sin should we be concerned about this um, yes and no um, I know at one point it says that um, you know how I feel more comfortable looking at it like from a holiness perspective I believe that they don't, I don't know that they really preach original sin the same way the Baptists and the Calvinist type of people do Presbyterians or whatever and a lot of just the mainstream Christians they all believe we were all born in sin okay because because David said that he was he was in sin in iniquity he was, he was shaped or formed or born born in sin basically and uh, does that mean he was born a sinner you know because there's another passage that makes it pretty abundantly clear that because of one man sin we all become sinners you know that's what it looks like it's saying um, now there's ways to look at it a different way where he sinned and sin just come into the world and sin is just so everywhere that we are born into sin as though, as though a fish was born into water like it's almost impossible not to be caught up with the sin and fall into sin with yourself you know because like you could be a holy person and be around sinners and not partake in what they're doing you know and that's not a sin okay same with as a person can be born holy into a world of sin and not partake of that stuff okay and that i that i that's actually more where i'm at but at the same time i see the scriptures it says that you know we are all, we are all guilty because of one's person that's and it sounds weird compared to what i believe but it's like that's what i heard even in the king james version so um should you be concerned with it not really not really because um it, it depends on how far people push these things they sit there and eliminate like people of god okay the reason why i can't the reason why i would call it a concern it's because people get so much by the letter that they, they, they deny the work of the Holy Spirit in people's lives who don't believe that. They just say this is of Satan. If you believe this, you're totally wrong. It's not true. It is biblical and it is it can cause the reality of God um, in some people's life. You know, some people do believe that and it's not, a, it's not an issue. The truth, the only issue is this. Do you believe that we all have fallen short of the glory of God? Yes or no. Whether you were born in sin or you were born holy and just fell into sin we've all fallen short of the glory of God so once again I made another video called Calvinism versus Arminianism the unprofitable war okay um, I personally am opposed to most of what Calvinism stands for I think it can be a very very dangerous doctrinally but I believe at the same time people 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 wipe it out without really taking a look at it okay now Paris Reedhead one of my heroes he takes a stand about Calvinism. He says, yeah, Calvin, I'm not defending him. And I dis he says he disagrees with the doctrines. But he says, like, the tulip, T-U-L-I-P, preservation of the saints. He says, this is not, he's not teaching antinomianism. He's not saying that you can just be saved by believing in Jesus Christ. And now you can never lose your salvation. He says, no, the Holy Spirit has the power to preserve his saints. Okay? Um, just take the P preservation of the saints does the Holy Spirit have the power to preserve his own people yes he does okay now that's where the that's where the Calvinist and Arminian can agree we all believe that the Holy Spirit can do that doesn't I don't know that he's saying that it will happen no matter what like they can live no matter how they want to I mean I've seen people take the Calvinistic doctrines and make them into absolute ludicrous foolishness I've seen them 
I've seen people do that with just about every subject under the sun though, okay? So it doesn't really matter. All these things, there's a lot of just questions that people get into this stuff. Most important thing is that we die to self and find God. We need to tell ourselves the truth and walk in it. Walk in the light that God has given you. Walk with Jesus Christ no matter what it costs. All this other stuff, you'll find it doesn't matter. You'll find it gets in the way of the thing that matters most. Do you know God? Do you care to know God? Do you weep to know God? God, where are you for real? Where are you for real? As dumb as that must look, who cares? That's what a child would do if he says, God, I don't feel like I'm in touch with you right now. The whole world's in sin because they have no examples because the church is not seeking to know God, period. Okay? Most important thing. Listen to, the re people. Listen to the revivalists. They had the best fruit ever. You'll know them by their fruit. Who had the best fruit in history? Listen to them. Listen to the fruit. Listen to the evidence of the reality of God. Don't listen to the rhetoric. Don't listen to all the games. Listen to the power of God being displayed. Or you will yourself fall in love with all these stupid little doctrines. I can tell you ten different versions of very popular, widespread doctrines that are absolutely death. And most people are, who are involved with those ten things, I believe most of them are in deep trouble. Because they're going to fall into a very convictionless place. But that's what the Holy Spirit is here to do. When He comes, He will convict the whole. He will reprove the world of sin and of judgment and righteousness. So please don't get into all these certain kinds of questions. The most important thing is that you are radically swept up with the knowledge of God. Because you know Him. If He does not know us, we, is not, we are not known of Him. We better tremble and stop questioning all these other questions. Okay? It's important to ask questions if, if it's helping you shape. If it's helping you where God is like, God, what is this, you know? What do these people think? What do you think, brother? What, sister, what, how do you feel about this question? Those kinds of things. If it's helping you get to know God, then it's okay. But if it's helping you just find another way to sit there and ignore those idols in our heart, ignore the sin, the indwelling sin, if the indwelling sin is not being addressed, then all this other stuff is just idolatry. It's just you trying to like play hopscotch while you're not you know just over here just kinda acting like you're moving when you're really going nowhere you know just like yeah praise God I know this and I know that doctrine I know that one I know the other one I know the other one look how fast I'm going oh glory to God I come backwards you know look, I know everything I know that I know this doctrine I know this is right and this is how I'm right people do that because they're in disobedience okay that's the only reason people get into that so please everybody I'm getting worked up about this forgive me but it's important that we understand the most important thing, that we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit working on our life. If it's not a reality, die on your face and cry out to God and do what you know you have to do. You know what? Even better than that, just do what you got to do that's right, okay? If there's stuff that's obvious in your life that is wrong, kill it. <laughs> kill it. You know what I'm saying? If there was some kind of, some kind of virus in your house, you would say, I want nothing to do with it because I hate it. It's killing my family. It's disgusting. It's grossing me out. It's turning into worms in my house. You'd burn the whole house down because you wanted it gone. No. If you want the reality of God in your life, you're going to burn all the sin out of your life. All, these, all, this, all this stupid nonsense. It does not come from God. Language doesn't come from God. You say, all this is coming because I don't know God. And I know that's why. Because of that, 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 and that. Burn it all as if it's a bunch of virus and worms in your house trying to destroy your whole life and gross you out. Maggots. Gross stuff. Worms. Repulsive crawlies and disgusting things. How, how, much, how joyful would you be to have a scorpion walking on your, on your bare back when you're waking up in the morning? No, you like to have clean sheets. Warm, comfortable bed. Ah, oh, a nice cup of coffee. Let's have a donut. You know, some carbohydrates that you can work off in the day. But a scorpion and some ants crawling on you, it's disgusting, okay? And in the presence of God, all those little compromises look grosser than that. I'm trying to make a point. I want you to understand. It's hard to explain, but I'm telling you, the, the way a lot of Christians talk today looks like worms crawling on my, in me, all over my hair and all over my body. Because I'm just like, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. Those things are disgusting. You know, I told, I told the pastor one time, I'm like, why are you playing that kind of worldly music? You're playing Christian music, and now you're playing this worldly music. I'm like, now all that other stuff that you do is worthless. You know why? Because you're still not pure in this department. 
What if you were married to some? What if you were married to somebody? And she says that she's going to be perfectly true to you every day of the year except one. How valuable would she be? Not at all. You know that'd be disgusting to you. You'd be like, you are repulsive. You are the worst woman in the planet. You are nothing more than a prostitute to me. Get behind me, Satan. And you'd run for your life because you couldn't believe your ears that someone would ever release that filth from their mouth. How could that ever be in your heart? It's disgusting. Well, that's how we are. Lord, is it okay that I just watch this kind of stuff? No. No, it's not. You know why it's not? Because you're going to let the devil and he's going to mess you up and, you, and then people start asking questions that don't mean anything. Questions about all this stuff doesn't matter when you have childlike joy from knowing God. We must fight to know God. We must fight, stay free. Remember God's standard for standing, His standard for walking. How do we handle ourselves in the workplace? How do we handle ourselves in the travel? How do we handle ourselves around people? How do we handle ourselves around elders? How do we handle ourselves around people younger than us? We honor them, people above us, people equal, people below us, people we've been given authority over. We honor them, hold them in high value, treat them good. People in the streets, no road rage. No, you first. Be, be at peace, my friend. Amen. <laughs> it's because we care about people. We want to do things right before the Lord. There's a standard. We care about the standard. We have the fruitful life. Start getting into all this other stuff is evidence that we're becoming unfruitful in our life. All very, very good questions. So please don't get me wrong. All very good questions. And I know I take a long time to answer these things. But it's, very, it's so serious. It's so serious. What? Get in the Word all the time? What? Get in the prayer all the time? Just do right before God and you, you'll know. You'll know. You don't, I don't have to tell someone to go drink water. They know to drink because they, they, they're thirsty. You know, I'm telling people, don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to do all these things that people tell you to do. Just do right. And you'll know when to read the Word. You'll know when to go and pray. You'll know because you know Him. You'll know because he's your reality. He's, you'll know because you weep in his presence saying, Lord, is there something else that you want me to know? Is there another thing I can lay down? Is there another place I can die and crucify flesh that I may know you and walk with you and be touched of you and just be in your presence and in the holy of holies and just be restored in you? You know, amen. What's most important is that we do what we're supposed to do. Let our thinking be changed to his thinking. His thoughts are not our thoughts, but they can be when we listen. He teaches us how to do that. <laughs> he teaches us how. Amen, amen, and amen.